Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight, in Grade 5, in Module 3, we are working on Lesson 14. And in Lesson 14, we are strategizing to solve multi-term problems. So let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. These are a real challenge. Let's take a look at problem number one. Rearrange the term so that you can add or subtract mentally, then solve. So I'm going to take a look at Part D. Let's see, I want to look at my terms. I'm going to read them through first, and then we'll sort of strategize mentally. Uh, let's see, we have 7 ninths plus 1 half minus 3 halves plus 2 ninths. So I'm noticing a couple of things here, which is we have different denominators, but really we only have two different denominators. We have ninths, 7 ninths, and 2 ninths, and then we have halves, 1 half minus 3 halves. So I'm going to, in my head, rearrange these so that... Uh, we can do this mentally. So I'm going to group the ninths together. So that's 7 ninths plus 2 ninths plus 1 half minus 3 halves. So I've just grouped the ninths together and now I can see how I can help, to, I can try to solve this mentally. Because this right here, 7 ninths plus 2 ninths, that's just 9 ninths and I know 9 ninths is just 1. Okay, so that part I can solve really easily. And then this part, I have another question, let's see. Uh, we had one half, and then we subtracted three halves. Well, my goodness, that means that this is the same as being an, as subtracting two halves, right? Two minus three halves would be minus two halves. And minus two halves is just one, minus one. So I think I just have one minus one. I'm pretty sure our answer here is just zero. Grouping those things together allows me to see that, right? It allows me to see this as one, because I can group my ninths together mentally. Now, look. I'll give you this. If you want to go ahead and do this, you can say, oh, 9 ninths, and then this is plus 1 minus 3 halves, so that's minus 2 halves, and then that tells you, oh, it's 1 minus 1 equals 0. But when you get to this point, if you're able to solve that mentally and you're able to do that so carefully, you can get to 0 just on your own, that'd be great. Let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. Problem number two, directions are fill in the blank to make the statements true. Oh boy, what a mess. We have 9 and 5 6 plus 3 and 1 fourth plus some number equals 14. Wow, that's a lot to deal with. Uh, you know what, let me see, what, how can I think about this problem? You know, anytime I have this kind of addition on one side and then a number on the other, I think, you know, I do a little drop tape diagram in my head and I think, you know what this is? This is part, 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 whole, right? We have part, part, part equals the whole and the whole is 14. So if we had part, 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 whole, and we didn't know one of the parts, how would we find that out? Well, just looking at this diagram, we would find that out. We would start with the whole, and we would subtract away each of the parts, and that would leave us with our missing part, right? So I think we can do the same thing here. I think we can say, look, this is the same as 14, the whole, minus 9 and 5 sixths, minus 1 and 1 fourth right? This part is the same as the whole minus the other two parts. So let's see how we can solve this. Uh, we've got, let's see, all right, well, you know, in the past we've gone ahead and we've uh, taken our, our whole units first. So 14 minus 9 minus 1, let's see, that's 14 minus 10, so that's 4. And then we have to subtract 5 sixths, and then we have to subtract 1 fourth. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ways we can solve this. Um, I'm going to go with the, the way that I think is the easiest for me, which is I am a little bit perplexed that we have two different fractions with different, um, with different denominators. So I'm going to try to get uh, those in common units first. So I'm going to look and see. Um, obviously, I can't express fourths as sixths. There's no number I can multiply fourths by to get to sixth. But I'm noticing that if I skip down by six and I get to twelfths, that that would actually help. So I'm going to go ahead and in my head, I'm going to convert 5 6 to twelfths. Let's see, so 5 times 2, that would be 10 twelfths. And then I can convert my fourths into twelfths. And I need to, do, I guess I need to multiply by 3, 3 times 3. So that would be minus 3 twelfths. Awesome. And now I can go ahead and at least combine my twelfths. So I have 4 minus 13 twelfths. Now, there's a lot of different ways to solve from here, too. Let's see, I'm noticing a couple of things. 13 twelfths is the same in, as 1 and 1 twelfth, right? So I, we could, this whole thing is the same as 4 minus 1 and 1 twelfth. 
Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and shrink a little bit, and I'm going to continue my work uh, over here. So 4 minus 1 and 1 twelfth, I can go ahead and do the whole number subtraction. So that's the same as 3 minus 1 twelfth, right? Because I did my 4 minus 1. And 3 minus 1 twelfth, well, in order for me to be able to subtract twelfths, I need to make some. So we'll decompose our 3 into 2 and 12 twelfths minus 1 twelfth, right? Because we can express 3 as 2 and two twelfths, right? And we need those twelfths. Now we can do the subtraction. Two twelfths minus one, sorry, twelve twelfths minus one twelfth is eleven twelfths. And I think we have our answer, two and eleven twelfths. Awesome. Now I just want to do a quick estimation count to see if this is a reasonable answer. If we were to put our two and eleven twelfths into this spot, we would have nine and something plus one and something plus two and something. That would be 12 and something. So 12 plus, well, almost 1, almost 1. Yep, I think we're getting pretty close to 14. So it has a reasonable chance of being, if we've done our math correct, uh, correctly, of being the right answer. And a quick estimate to just say, well, this is about 10, and this is about 3, and this is 1 and a quarter. So that's going to be about 13 and something. Yep, that's going to be about right. It's, a, it's in that range of about 14. So that really helps us out and helps us uh, to know if we are really on the wrong path. If we had come up with an answer like 12 or something like that, it wouldn't make any sense in this sentence. And even without figuring out common denominators and units and everything else, we could just see right away that this side would be much, much larger than this side, and our equation couldn't possibly be true. But we've got an answer that does seem to fit, and so I think we're in good shape. A little tape diagram you'll see can go a long way in helping to clarify how you can use the whole to figure out what operations you can use to solve your problem. And that's all I've got for tonight. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.